The first derivative test. This test is used to find the local minima and maxima. This concept corresponds to section 4.1 in the applied calculus text. We're going to start with an example. f of x is equal to x to the third minus 9x squared minus 48x plus 52. Using the power rule, we can obtain f prime of x as equal to 3x squared minus 18x minus 48. And since 52 is a constant, it will be plus 0. Through factorization, we will do that is equal to 3 parenthesis x squared minus 6x minus 16. We can further simplify that into 3 parenthesis x minus 8 close parenthesis parenthesis x plus 2. From this we can determine the candidates to be the local maximum or minimum. x equals 8 and x equals negative 2. 3 cannot be considered for minimum or maxima because 3 cannot equal 0. We want to know if the function is increasing or decreasing at 0 and it's easier to use the factored equation to determine this. We will then do f prime of 0 equals to 3 parenthesis 0 minus 8 close parenthesis parenthesis 0 plus 2. 3 is positive, negative 8, negative, 2, positive. The whole thing is negative. Since the first derivative is negative, it is decreasing at x equals 0. We can also say that it is decreasing in the whole interval of negative 2 to 8. To determine if the function changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, it helps to pick points and set up a graph. We're going to use point 100 and negative 100 to make our graph. f prime 100 equals 3 100 minus 8 close parenthesis parenthesis 100 plus 2. Each of these is positive so then f prime of 100 is positive and is increasing. The function is increasing from 8 to 100. We know that there are no zeros to change that between 8 and 100 as well. At 8, the function changed from decreasing to at 8, the function changed from decreasing to increasing, which means we have a local minima. If we take negative 100, we can see the other side of the graph. So f prime negative 100 equals 3 parenthesis, negative 100 minus 8, close parenthesis, parenthesis, negative 100 plus 2. 3 is positive, this is negative, and this is negative. When multiplied, f prime negative 100 is positive. This means that the function is increasing from negative 100 to negative 2, so negative 2 is a local max because it goes from increasing to decreasing. If we made our graph based on that information, we would have negative 100, positive 100, negative 2, and 8. From negative 100 to negative 2, it was determined to be increasing. From negative 2 to 8, it was determined to be decreasing. And from 8 to 100, it was determined to be increasing. Therefore, we can see our local max at negative 2, our local min at 8. The next example, we're going to do our next example for the first derivative test is going to be g of x is equal to x cubed. 
Using the power rule, we will determine that g prime of x is equal to 3x squared. We can set 3x squared equal to 0 and would maintain that there are two options to be the candidate for the local minimum x. But 3 cannot equal 0. Our other option, x squared equals 0, leaving us x equal to 0. So 0 is our only option to be the minimax. We can set up a graph that would help let us know. And we would use points negative 100 and positive 100. It doesn't matter what points you use, but points farther away give you a broad spectrum of what you can get. G prime negative 100 equal to 3 negative 100 squared. This line came from our prime function. Once we got our power rule, 3x squared, we plug negative 100 into that for our x. This is positive, because negative 100 times negative 100 is positive. Means that from one, negative 100 to 0, the function is increasing. If we do g prime 100 equals to 3 100 squared, that is also positive. So from 0 to 100, our function is increasing. This tells us that there is no max or min. And this is true if we consider the function. x cubed concave down to concave up, but the whole function is increasing. We recognize it then as being a weird inflection point without having a min or max.